We told you the other day about the trust barometer by Edelman. That's the massive global PR firm. The big news I shared with you was that trust in Canadian media was so low that half of Canadians didn't just distrust the media, didn't just think the media was biased, but half of Canadians actually thought that the media deliberately and willfully lied, to which I'd say, just half? Well, now we learn from the same company, Edelman, that trust in big tech has fallen to a new low. Joining us now to talk about his new article in Breitbart.com entitled, Survey. Americans' trust of big tech drops to all-time low is our friend Alan Bukhari. He's the senior tech editor for Breitbart.com. Great to see you, Alan. Um, it is to a record low. Only 57% of people trust big tech. But again, I would say, who are all these 50% of people? And what do they mean by they trust big tech? How could you possibly still trust them? I mean, I guess if Amazon delivers your packages, you might trust Amazon if you don't look too deeply into what they do in terms of censoring books and so on. Uh, but it's interesting that it, it continues to fall, and it's actually falling in the United States faster than the rest of the world. So trust in the big tech platforms at an all-time low around the world. But uh, the United, for the United States public, it's even lower than that. And I think that speaks to the fact that you know these companies have been particularly aggressive in, uh, in censoring people in the U.S., censoring uh, politicians, most notably uh, Donald Trump, and just general political interference um, over in, uh, in North America. And I think that's a symptom of the fact that there are no hate speech laws in the United States. Therefore, the left over the past four years has used Silicon Valley as a means to get around that by having Silicon Valley write the unofficial hate speech laws and regulate what people can and can't say in the public square. Yeah. You know, I was just bewildered the other day that Donald Trump doing an interview with Laura Trump, his uh, daughter-in-law, that was censored and banned from social media. I follow some crazy characters on Twitter, including some tyrants around the world. I just want to hear their propaganda to know what they're trying to say. I follow a number of Chinese tyrants and I follow Nicolas Maduro, the tyrant of of Venezuela. So I, I mean, I, I'm not following them because I, I agree with them or obey them. I'm following them because I want to know what my enemy says. It's incredible to me that foreign dictators can say what they want on the same social media platforms that the former president of the United States isn't even allowed to have an interview with him on. The, I, I, think, I think that's madness. And I'm sure countries around the world ought to be thinking, if Silicon Valley censors Trump, why can't they censor Viktor Orban in Hungary? Why can't they censor Narendra Modi in India? Why would they be limited in their scope of who they can censor and attack, right? Yeah, or the Chancellor of Germany or the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. And one of the things we saw after Silicon Valley platforms all banned Donald Trump while he was still president, uh, you know, the only world leader to be censored in that manner, what we saw was, you know, politicians in the French government, the German government, the Australian government, or uh, the Mexican government, the Mexican president even, all are coming out and saying, you know, Silicon Valley power has gone too far. Um, so I think uh, that this is a trend we're going to see if Silicon Valley continues to uh, politically interfere where its, uh, where its interference is not wanted. Um, and in the U.S., I think, uh, you know, just today there was news that Clarence Thomas has... Um, uh, put out an opinion saying, well, you know, sooner or later, the Supreme Court will have to make a ruling on these tech platforms and what they're and what kind of speech they're allowed to censor. And he suggested they might be considered common carriers or places of public accommodation, which would very much restrict the uh, the kind of moderation they're allowed to engage in. I saw that. I mean, uh, Clarence Thomas, by far my favorite judge on the Supreme Court, he really started developing some of the legal jurisprudence for how can you regulate these tech companies. And I think you're right. He's using analogies. I mean, we have to do that in the era of tech. I mean, sure, this technology is something we've never seen before, but we can draw analogies to the public airwaves and radio or public utilities and, you know, electricity or, or a gas line. So although tech is new, we have templates for how to 
give people certain rights, even if a private company has a monopoly or a near monopoly. Um, tell me what you think about um, Clarence Thomas starting to talk about, I, I don't even want to say regulating tech, but at least stopping tech from acting like, you know, a company mining town where the boss says, if you don't like it, get yourself a new city, you know? Yeah, and uh, some of the analogies that he used uh, are pretty uh, uh, amusing. He, um, he talked about how, you know, well, you could choose not to use a toll road and instead, you know, swim across the river. Or, you know, if you can't use the uh, the railway or the or planes or the, uh, or the highways, you can choose to hike the Oregon Trail. But, uh, you know, there's a reason those kinds of things are regulated and they can't just deny service to anyone. And uh, that's the kind of analogy he's using. Um, uh, what, was, what was also interesting about his opinion was that he, uh, he, you know, said, you know, Congress should, you know, make new regulations to take all this into account. Otherwise, the Supreme Court will have to do so instead. And that kind of speaks to the way lawmakers have really abdicated their responsibility to protect users, protect ordinary citizens from the power of these tech companies. Uh, and, and the way in which particularly I think the Democrats have uh, seen Silicon Valley power and their allies in Silicon Valley as an opportunity to censor and suppress their political opponents. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.